Hey there, Next Gen Hackers here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to customize the UID and GID of a specific user inside of your Docker image. This could be really useful if you plan to run your containers as a non-root user that you set up in your image. It's going to be very important that the user ID and group ID inside of your Docker container matches the exact UID and GID of your user on your Docker host if you are using volumes. Otherwise, you're going to get permission errors. Although I will say a quick aside here, if you are using Docker Desktop, you don't really need to worry about too much around this because it will automatically fix the permissions for you. But if you're not using uh, Docker Desktop, let's say with potentially WSL2, if you just want to run it natively inside of there, or you're running native Linux and you just don't want to use Docker Desktop or can't, or you're deploying application to production on a Linux server where you wouldn't be using Docker Desktop, then yes, it's going to be really important to set things up so that your UID and GID match on both ends. Because even in production, you might want to use volumes for, you know, maybe you'll just volume mount out your public directory where your static files are so that Nginx on your Docker host could potentially read it. So yes, everything we're about to go over here uh, is available in an open source repo here, Docker Flask example. I've updated this to account for being able to customize this UID and GID. I also have different example applications for or Rails, Django, uh, Node, and Phoenix. So just replace that there if you wanna go and check that out. I'll leave some links in the description. But yeah, in this video, we're gonna kinda just go over all the changes that I made to support this feature and kinda demonstrate what happens when you don't have things set up correctly, with permissions at least. So if I run a Docker Compose up here, I already built this uh, off camera here just so we don't have to wait some time for it to be built. But yeah, this application is up and running here. If I reload a couple times here, we can see that uh, everything is good to go. It's all totally loading, uh, no problem. And if I go back to here, we can see that all the files here are owned by Nick Nick. Right now, this entire directory is volume mounted into the, into the container for development. Uh, that's just standard stuff, right? So that I can change some files in this project and then immediately see those changes in a browser if I change them, right? So if I go here and I go to, I don't know, like the app CSS file, something like that, you know, I can just go and change, I don't know, the body of this to be uh, background color, like green, something like that, just so we can see the difference here in video. And then I'll go here and we can see, uh, well, there we go, green. Done. Okay, cool. So we have volume mounts are totally working. Everything is good to go. But imagine this scenario now where if you ran the ID command and your user wasn't 1000, 1000, then you would have a situation here because by default, your user ID and group ID in the first user that you create on a Linux system, which includes being created inside of a Docker image, is going to be 1000, 1000. But if you have, let's say, two users on your system, then that second user is going to have 1001 and 1001. But in Docker, it's gonna be a thousand thousand because you know, you're not gonna make multiple uh, users in your Docker image and boom, it's gonna have a mismatch there and you're gonna get some issues. So if I actually switch over to, actually before I do that, what should I do? Let me copy this uh, directory here, Docker Flask example app. I'm gonna copy that to uh, someone, which is a different user on my system. We're gonna see that in a second here, but I just wanna make sure I copy all this over to that someone's directory here. And now if I sudo sue as someone here, then if I go into someone's home directory into Docker Flask example here, uh, this is just a, a different user I have on my system here. We can see that I have the user ID and group ID. They are not 1000, 1000, it is going to be different here. But if I run uh, Docker Compose build here, then this is going to take a little bit here, or it's actually not going to take uh, any time at all here. <laughs> I thought it was gonna take a little bit longer here. Oh, right, okay, never mind. I know why, um, I'm not gonna spoil it though. But yeah, if I go and uh, sudo to someone here, let me just go back into this user's Docker Flask example app here. And if I just run a Docker Compose down and up here, just to make sure the old containers from before are gone, and I up this project, I'm anticipating that we're gonna get some permission error here. Why? Because if I go and check this out here, you know, one, well, hold on, all these files are owned by root, so um, good idea to fix that. So let me just go sudo ch own, uh, what do I wanna do recursively to someone, someone of this directory here. Um, hmm, okay, hold on. I'm gonna have to rerun this command here uh, with a different user. There we go, because I have uh, the Nick user set up to have passwordless sudo. I don't even know what my root password is for that someone user, but uh, going back to here, then if we go here, we can see that uh, everything is good to go, right? You can see all the files are owned by someone, someone. This is totally fine, totally good. But if I go and run a Docker Compose up now, what's going to happen is we're probably gonna see some permission errors here. Right, permission denied. Why? Because the UID and GID inside of my Docker container has a uh, UID and GID of a thousand, not a thousand and two and a thousand and three. Um, those numbers are again are just like what we see over here. So yeah, just have some issues, right? We can't we can't write to those files and everything is broken. And um, 
What I ended up doing was, yeah, I patched all of my example applications to support being able to customize that UID and GID. So uh, let's go over how that actually works here. So it's going to be better if I just switch back to my regular Nick user over here and we'll take a look at some of the files here and some of the modifications that I made. We're going to take, uh, yeah, full use here of using something called build arguments with Docker. So the way I have this set up here is I have a Docker file and we're not going to go over this whole entire Docker file, right? I've done uh, quite a lot of coverage of that, especially in that DockerCon video. I'll leave um, a card to that one. So if you want to check it out, it really goes over a lot of the patterns that you see here. But the really important takeaway for this video, we're going to focus on just a couple of things here. So, um, and again, like this is a multi-stage build. So yeah, let's maybe, well, actually let's not ignore this completely here, but maybe we're going to use the same patterns in uh, two different spots, but yes. So the idea here is I have a build argument for the UID, a build argument for the GID. If we do not decide to customize these build arguments, and we're going to see how we're going to set them pretty soon here, but if we decide not to change them, then they're going to default to a thousand thousand. This is uh, what would happen by default when you create a new user, it's going to be a thousand, a thousand, even if these build arguments weren't here, because, you know, we are inside of uh, a Linux system here, you know, creating the first user is still going to be a thousand, just like it would on a, on a native Linux system here. Now, this is kind of interesting. So this is the assets build stage. It's actually using node as the base image. And unlike a lot of the official images, the node official image, at least at the time of making this video, it actually creates a node user for you uh, beforehand. Like you don't even need to worry about creating that user, but that user when it's created from the official node image, it is going to have a UID and GID of a thousand. And that is going to be a problem. So um, and by the way, this is not specific to assets, right? If you're just using Node for, you know, server-side uh, JavaScript on the back end, like you're still going to run into this issue here if you're using this Node image. So what you could do here is you can just modify the Node group to have the group ID of whatever the value is for the for the um, arg GID here. You know, we're going to see how to customize that in a second. And but in addition to modifying the group group's ID. We're also going to modify the specific node user to have a different UID and GID based on whatever these build args happen to be. And again, you know, build arguments are just arguments that you can change at build time. So you can just customize what certain things are when you actually build your image, which is much different than customizing something like, you know, an environment variable that you might want to change at runtime, right? Big distinction there between build time and runtime. So these are build arguments. Um, but yeah, when you create a user, and actually we're going to see in a second here that we're doing the very exact same thing basically here for this Python image. So the Python image doesn't create a Python image for you beforehand. So uh, you need to actually create this user yourself. And again, you know, you can name these users, whatever you want. I just like to name the user based on the actual official image. I don't think that's like a, a documented thing anywhere, but it just seems reasonable to be like, okay, I'm running the Python image as the Python user. And, I, and again, like I don't have a Python user on my system. I have the Nick user, but um, the mappings for the bind mounts all happen with the UID and GIDs, not the actual names themselves. I covered more details about that in my DockerCon talk. But the first thing I do here is yes, we need to modify the Python group to have the matching uh, GID here, which we have set up. And then also I just create a brand new Python image here and we can see some flags here unrelated to this video, you know, creating home directory. And this one, uh, don't actually know the super details on this one, but I am running um, uh, a tool called Hadolint. It's basically a linter for your Docker file. And it was like, yo, Nick, like you really need to add this over here. Otherwise like bad things are going to happen. So maybe I'll do a future video on that one and know a little bit more about it, but I, I set that there. But we can see here also, you know, the user and group ID are now uh, mapped to whatever the build arguments are. So this takes care of, you know, the plumbing to get things set up here. And by the way, like, you know, when you switch to the Python user here, you know, everything below that is going to be running as the Python user. Although when you do copy files in, you need to actually CH own them to the user that you want. Again, details were covered in the Docker talk. DockerCon talk about that. But that's all the changes I made for my Docker file. Basically just setting up the args and then enforcing that uh, they're set up here for the user and group. Done. And by the way, I should add too, like you can't, I know there is a flag here. I forget what it is, something like user group. Like you can actually have this user command to add the group for you, but I noticed that I had to explicitly run this command beforehand. Otherwise I was still getting permission errors. Actually, if you know why that is in the comments, let me know below. I kind of didn't fight it or research it too much. I just trusted the system telling me like, hey, it didn't work. Uh, actually do this instead. And then I did this instead and hey, it worked. But okay, cool. We've got our build args. Now let's go to the Docker Compose YAML file and we'll go over how to actually set these build arguments so that you don't need to define them like every time you build your Docker image on the command line. 
So, and this was also, by the way, covered in the DockerCon talk in more detail, like, you know, these over here. But specifically here, we have uh, build arguments and, you know, this pattern as well it was covered in the DockerCon talk. So you may want to check it out if you're not familiar with this. LAS is an anchor is basically they're being referenced here for uh, two different containers that are being run or different services, web and worker, but they share the same common properties here. But yes, we have build and arguments, and then we can define the arguments here that we'd like. And we have the UID and GID being set here. We could hard code values if you'd like, but uh, instead, what I've chosen to do is uh, use variable interpolation, which also was covered in that DockerCon video. If you want to check it out, I feel like, uh, you know, mentioned that a couple times in this video. So uh, if you want to learn all these patterns, it's right there in a 45 minute video, totally free, no ads even. Um, but yeah, uh, this will actually look for a UID and GID environment variable in your .env file. This is just a feature of Docker Compose. You know, anytime you see squigglies like this, it's going to look for an env file by default. If it's not there, then it's going to default to this value. So in this case, yeah, the UID and GID are going to default to a thousand. Otherwise, if it's in your env file, then it's going to use them. So I have this set for uh, both of my stages here, the assets one, I'm doing the same thing. And then also for the uh, app one as well. And if we go to the env file, then here, and also it's in the env example, which is commit to version control. So, you know, there's some docs there and you can basically just copy the .env, that example file to the env file and you're good to go. That's in the documentation of the repo in the readme file. But uh, you can see here that they're commented out. Why? Because they're defaulting to a, a thousand. You don't need to overwrite them. But, you know, there are some comments here that's saying like, you know, if you're running native Linux and your UID GRD isn't a thousand, which you can verify by running that ID command that we did before, then you can just set these to be whatever you need them to be. So in my case here, wait, warning, changing a read-only file. Why is this file read-only? Uh, what happened here? Did I copy something like incorrectly? Oh, I'm in the wrong user here. So let me go back to this user here. And then I'll go back to this user's, am I in the right directory? No, it should just be my home directory. And then the, the Docker Flask example. Okay, great. So Docker Flask example here, I just want to now, uh, yeah, so <laughs> all my Vim config and everything is not set up here for the someone user. So I'm actually going to go in here and uh, we'll change these. Why is it a read only file? What is going on here? Okay, hold on. Uh, some live debugging. Okay, okay, everything is owned by root. So I guess, yeah, I need to drop back into the nick user. Then I need to sudo ch own uh, this in the Docker Flask directory here. Nope, that's not going to work. I need to actually put in uh, home slash someone here. There we go, home someone. What am we doing? We are changing the ownership recursively to the someone someone user for the home someone Docker Flask example application here. That should work. Okay, and now if I go back into this someone user, uh, go into someone user's home directory, and then go to Docker Flask example here, and now this should be owned by the someone someone. Uh, everything is good to go here. And yeah, we saw before that, you know, we get some permission errors when things are set up like this, right? So what we need to do now is just go into this env file here, and then change these to be uh, the matching UID and GID of what we got from the output of that ID command before, which was 1002 and 1003. So just as a reminder, run the ID command here, UID is 1002, GID is 1003. And now what I could do is uh, I can do a Docker Compose build here. And this is actually going to take uh, a little bit of time, maybe potentially, uh, potentially not. We will see how long it takes. Uh, yeah, this would be kind of interesting. Like these are times where I wish I were kind of like live streaming this so I can answer questions in chat or, you know, interact with some uh, folks who might be watching this video. Yeah, there's not much we can do here other than wait. Um, yeah, I really can't. Well, I guess while that's doing that, what we could do is let me open up another tab here and we'll just go over. Uh, actually, no, that's basically it. Yeah, I was going to say like we can go over some other stuff that was related to this change here. But yeah, there was nothing else like literally just added a change log thing that was like, hey, ability to customize this, blah, 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 blah. But uh, yeah, I guess one quick thing to mention is, again, you know, if you're using Docker Desktop, you don't even need to worry about setting these. Uh, it's going to be good to go. Chances are, even if you're running native Linux, right, uh, unless you created multiple users, then again, yep, you're just not going to have to mess with it. And if you're setting up your own VPS or, you know, a server on DigitalOcean or whatever cloud provider or any provider that you want, you know, chances are you're going to be in full control of whatever you that you have. So again, it's probably going to be a thousand thousand. So you don't even need to worry about this one. But I did have quite a few different uh, yeah, issues that came up here. Um, and that's why I decided to go and actually solve this one. So 
If you go here, uh, I did make a pull request for this one on my own uh, repo here with some testing instructions. But you know, there were a couple of different issues from a different uh, Rails example, Django example. There's another one for Flask or whatever. And uh, yeah, a couple people ran into this issue and yep, this is going to be good. So I actually did test this on two different systems, including Docker Desktop. So it's not really like a YOLO moment here. Like it is pretty well tested here. And uh, yeah, totally works. So let's go back here and see if things are built. Looks like things are built successfully. Cool. I'm gonna do a compose down here, just uh, get rid of the old containers that we may have had created here. And if we do a compose up, then we should no longer get permission errors here because uh, the UID and GID matches. And we can see we're not getting any permission errors here. And if I go back to the browser here and reload, we are back to business here. So everything is good to go. White background here. And yeah, if I were to change any files here, then everything would be nice. So I can go here. You know, maybe I'll go to, wow, it's it's so hard not to be able to just fuzzy find files here. But if I go into whatever, it doesn't really matter, right? If I go into the templates directory here for the layouts, for the index here, you know, I can just add some, uh, I don't know, exclamation points here at the title here. I save the file. I go back to the browser and up here, we should see some exclamation points. Maybe a little bit small. I'll zoom in when I'm editing. But anyways, like, yeah, volumes are totally working now. Uh, we are not getting any issues in terms of permissions, we are totally good to go. We now have a mechanism to be able to customize these values as needed. So if you end up trying this, let me know in the comments below uh, if you run into any issues or, you know, maybe there is a better strategy to do this. Um, you know, I've been using Docker for a long time. That doesn't mean I know everything, uh, but this is a reasonable-ish approach. I mean, it's kind of lame that you need to rebuild the image when you actually do this, but yeah, I mean, what is the alternative to that, right? So if we go back to here, just so it's a little bit easier to read things, you know, if I go back to the Docker file here, uh, if this user mod needs to have the UID and GID at this point in time in the image, or yeah, I mean, there's like, you know, I thought about potentially like, well, could this args be lower in the image so that if you change them, you don't need to like do everything. But yeah, I mean, I don't think there's much else we can do here. But like I said, you know, if you have a better way to do this, I'm very happy to... Uh, you know, change the application uh, open source projects here to use whatever method you think is best. Now, I don't want to keep rambling, but yeah, uh, any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.